Hello everyone, welcome back to the Blue Team training series brought to you by Hackasploit and Linode. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at host-based intrusion detection with OSSEC. Uh, so the objective here is to set up OSSEC and uh, install the OSSEC agent on the systems you would like to monitor in order to detect host-based intrusions on those systems. Now, uh, I am going to be calling OSSEC OSSEC. You can also, you know, uh, you know, you can also uh, pronounce it as OSSEC, whatever works for you. So what will we be covering in this video? So we'll get an introduction to OSSEC. Uh, we'll take a look at some of the features that OSSEC uh, provides us with. Uh, how it works, uh, how to install and configure the OSSEC server, configuring the OSSEC web user interface, how to deploy an OSSEC agent on a system you'd like to monitor, and how to detect uh, and how to detect intrusions with OSSEC. So, if you are thinking to yourself, I've heard about OSSEC before, at least in this series, uh, you have, and that's because uh, Wazoo utilizes OSSEC, uh, you know, for monitoring or you know for the purpose of monitoring. Uh, the system's way of installing the Wazoo agent on. And, uh, you know, just the same, uh, OSSEC has its own agents that you can install on Windows, Linux, Mac OS, etc. And, uh, you know, it really is cool. So by this point, you should know how to configure or how to, uh, you know, go through the OSSEC configuration file and uh, essentially, you know, uh, customize it based on what type of data you're looking for or, you know, what type of data you want reported back to the OSSEC server. As for the prerequisites, they're pretty much uh, the same as we had uh, in the previous set of videos in part one. So let's get an, intro an introduction to OSSEC. OSSEC is an open source, scalable, host-based intrusion detection system, also known as an HIDS. All right, so what is an HIDS or host-based intrusion detection system? An HIDS system is used to monitor the system it is running on by analyzing the network traffic and logging intrusions or malicious activity. So it's fairly similar to a network intrusion detection system. However, in this case, we're not really monitoring what's going on on a network. We're monitoring what's going on on, a, on one particular system, right? An HIDS provides you with a holistic view or understanding of the activity on a specific system, allowing you to detect and respond to malicious activity. So, as I said, we've already explored or taken a look at a basic HIDS, which was uh, when we uh, explored the process of utilizing uh, Wazoo for security event uh, monitoring uh, and essentially detecting threats. And, uh, you know, the, the same thing will be applicable to OSSEC. The only difference is uh, we actually need to set up the OSX server manually. And uh, after that, you know, we can install the agents with uh, quite a bit of ease. All right. Uh, so OSX is used to monitor and control your systems by combining all aspects of uh, an HIDS, uh, log monitoring and security information and event management in one solution. So the objective here or the way this works is you set up an OSX server, right? And this is responsible for getting all the data from all the, uh, from all the agents. Uh, it then analyzes that data and tells you as a security engineer or a security analyst whether something is suspicious or whether, you know, you're under attack. Uh, you know, it could be any type of malicious activity. So uh, that's what the server is responsible for. The agents, have, as I've already explained, uh, are essentially installed on the systems you'd like to monitor and they connect back and send data back uh, to the actual OSX server. The OSX server is also known as the manager. So if you hear that, uh, just know that I'm referring to the uh, to the actual server. Uh, one of the great things with OSX is that it is uh, also multi-platform and provides you with the ability to customize your HIDS policies across multiple platforms like Linux, Windows, Mac OS and Solaris. So these are some of the features that OSSEC uh, offers. So firstly, it's multi-platform. Uh, you, you get real-time alerts, uh, centralized management of, you know, your agents and your server and the actual configuration. Uh, you know, you get monitoring with agents. You also get file integrity checking, log monitoring, rootkit detection, and of course, active response. And of course, we explored active response with Wazoo. So all you need to do is just create an active response configuration based on your own requirements and, uh, you know, based on a specific uh, rule or a specific rule ID. And, uh, you know, you can essentially respond to particular threats or attacks. 
So how uh, does OSSEC work? All right, so OSSEC is comprised of multiple components that make up a typical deployment. So as I've already said, you have your OSSEC manager or server. This is the central component of an OSSEC deployment. It is responsible for storing logs, events, file integrity, checking, databases, etc. An agent is a program or utility that is installed on the host or systems uh, that you'd like to be monitored. Agents collect information in real time and forward it to the OSSEC manager or server for analysis and event correlation. So this is the lab environment we're going to be using. In this case, we're going to be working within my, uh, within my virtual environment. And that is the subnet there. So on the Ubuntu system, we're going to set up the OSSEC server, as you can see here. And we're also going to have an attacker system and we're going to have a Windows system running Windows 7 that is going to have the OSSEC agent installed on it so that we can see, uh, you know, what essentially is going on on that system. And of course, we'll be utilizing the attacker system to try and uh, launch a few attacks on it. And we'll see whether we'll be able to identify those intrusions with uh, OS, the OSSEC server uh, or the OSSEC manager as it's known as well. Uh, I have a couple of learning resources here for you. So uh, you can get started by taking a look at the OSSEC documentation available here. That uh, link is hyperlinked. And then of course you can download OSSEC. So uh, we can now get started with a practical demonstration. So I'm gonna switch over to my Ubuntu virtual machine and uh, we can uh, we can essentially you know take a look at how to get the OSSEC server installed first. All right, so I'm back on my Ubuntu VM and I'm currently on the OSSEC website. So that is ossec.net and uh, you can take a look at their website. So, you know, it gives you a description as to what this is used for. So server intrusion detection for every platform. And I do recommend taking a look at the official documentation for the OSSEC uh, project as it really is quite useful. Uh, you can also download OSSEC by uh, going in uh, by taking a look at the URL ossec.net forward slash ossec hyphen downloads. Uh, all of these links will be added as a resource to this video. Um, so you don't have to worry about that, but uh, we're using the standard ossec version. There is also ossec uh, plus, which again, uh, you know, is based or uh, will be, uh, will essentially contain the elk stack, machine learning, etc. Uh, if you click on that there, uh, you can see that uh, you'll need to uh, essentially, uh, you know, register here. So there we are. Just activate, uh, just activate OSSEC Plus by filling out the registration form uh, or info below and confirming your email. Then you'll be ready to download more powerful uh, OSSEC Plus. In our case, of course, we're interested in OSSEC here. This is the standard one that has log-based intrusion detection, rootkit detection, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So you can click on download. And you'll be provided with, uh, you know, the ability to specify or select your platform and you can then download the server or the actual agent itself. So if we, if we click on Ubuntu, because we're currently working on Ubuntu, you will need to add the following uh, source to your sources list here and then update your repositories and you can install the HIDS server or the HIDS agent right over here. However, in our case, because we're going to be performing a bit of uh, configuration, what we're going to do is take a look at the OSSEC HIDS GitHub repository, which contains the latest release in the form of source code. And if we take a look at this other GitHub repository, this is the OSSEC uh, web user interface, which is a project that is no longer maintained. And it's uh, obviously quite, is, it's quite old, but it uh, will actually provide us with a web user interface uh, that will allow us to uh, essentially, you know, view the latest events, uh, security events and intrusions or alerts, if you will, uh, from the web interface. So uh, as they say here, we recommend using Kibana, Splunk or similar projects for monitoring alerts. And I've already covered how to utilize Splunk. And of course, we've taken a look at the Elk stack or Wazoo on top of the Elk stack, uh, the Elk stack. So you can check that out if you are interested, or you can opt to use uh, the OSSEC uh, plus version if you want. However, we are, you know, we're just focusing on OSSEC right now. So uh, in order to download it, uh, you're going to need to install a couple of dependencies. So this particular command here will install all the required uh, dependencies and packages required to uh, actually complete the, uh, the actual manual uh, compilation of OSSEC uh, because we're going to be compiling it. 
Uh, furthermore, this will all also install Apache uh, because we're going to be setting up the OSSEC web user interface. So uh, this command will also be provided or added as a resource to this particular video. In my case, I've already installed all of these packages with the exception of, uh, you know, lib SSL version one. Uh, which, uh, you know, I, I already have installed, but uh, yeah, you can see I have all the packages installed there. All right, so we would now need to download the latest release from the OSSEC HIDS GitHub repository. So I'll click on releases there. Uh, and you can see the latest version as of recording this video is version 3.7.0. So I'll click on the source code uh, on the actual tar, uh, the actual tar file here. And uh, you can see it's going to be downloaded and I will navigate onto my desktop here. And uh, what we can do now is move that from the downloads directory. So there we go. And we can then say tar xzvf OSSEC HIDS 3.7.0, extract that, head over into the directory. Within this directory, you'll be uh, provided with the install script here. So we can provide it with executable permissions. So chmod plus x install.sh, and I'm just going to uh, type that in manually here. So install.sh, and then we are going to execute it with sudo or root privileges. So uh, sudo install.sh, hit enter. It's then going to prompt you to specify uh, your language for the setup. So I'll, uh, the default is English, so I'll just hit enter. It's going to tell you that you're about to start the installation process of the OSSEC HIDS. You must have a C compiler pre-installed on your system. So I'll hit enter. What kind of installation do you want? So based on what uh, you're setting this particular uh, server or, you know, this particular system to be. So this is not an agent. Uh, this is going to be a server. You can type in the help command to learn more about these different types here. So you can see that uh, choose server if you're setting up a log analysis server. Choose agent if you have another machine uh, to run as a log server and want to forward the logs to the server for analysis. Uh, choose local if you only have one system to monitor. Choose hybrid if you want this standalone system to analyze local logs before forwarding uh, alerts to another server. So we will say server. And uh, we'll, we'll, uh, where do we want to install uh, OSSEC HIDS? The default is under the var directory. So I'll hit enter. The installation directory already exists. Should I delete it? Uh, yes, you should. Do you want email notifications? In this case, no. However, if you do specify yes, then you need to configure the OSSEC.conf file and specify the SMTP credentials there. Uh, do you want to uh, run the integrity check daemon? Yes, we do. Uh, the rootkit detection engine yes active response yes which we've explored with wazoo do we want to enable the firewall drop response this is very important because this will essentially uh, be used to stop ssh brute force attacks so this is uh, in regards to the active response so uh, we can hit yes for that and do we want to add more any more ips to the whitelist uh, we can say no if you want to add an ip to the whitelist you can say yes and we want to enable the remote syslog uh, server. Yes, we do. That's going to be on port 514. If you have a firewall installed on this system, then make sure you add the rule accordingly for port 514. In my case, I don't have any firewall installed, so I'll just hit yes there. Hit enter, and it's going to begin the compilation process. So this is going to take a couple of seconds here. And uh, we should be able to compile this without any issues. In this case, it tells us we have an issue uh, with LD. So let us uh, verify what this is here. So what is LD? This is the GNU linker. And it tells us it cannot find uh, L system D. Um, so to resolve this issue, you uh, you would need to install the uh, lib system D dev package. Uh, once that is done, uh, I can just run the installer again, and uh, we'll need to go through the configuration. So I'll just hit enter. This is as a server install in that directory yes we do do you want any email notifications uh it looks like it's continuing from that point on uh no we don't uh yes yes uh yes yes no uh yes again i'll hit enter and uh, let's see whether the compilation completes here without any issues 
and uh, we shouldn't have any errors now so uh, the compilation should complete uh, without uh, any error after which i believe we'll be required to configure a couple of other options so there we are it looks like hids or the osec hids is done installing so uh, this is very important so there we are system is debian ubuntu or derivative the init script modified to start uh, osec hids during boot so configuration finished properly to start it, you need to head over into var, osec, bin, osec, and then you can execute the osec control binary and click on start. To stop it, you do the same thing. Uh, you can see that the configuration can be viewed or modified at the following directory. And if you take a look at the other documentation here, nothing else is important. So we would need to navigate to this directory when done. So I'll hit enter. And that looks uh, like it's done. In order to connect an agent and a server, you need to add each agent to the server, run the manage agents binary. So I'll head over into var, osec, uh, bin. And uh, what we'll do now is, uh, there we are. So I'll just say uh, sudo root. And I will head over into that directory. So var, osec, bin. And uh, these are the binaries here. So the first thing we would need to do is start it up. So OSSEC control start. So we'll say uh, OSSEC control start. And that is going to start the uh, analysis D or analysis daemon, log collector, uh, remote D, syscheck D, monitor D. And we can check the status, I believe. There we are. So they are all running. Uh, and uh, let us take a look at any other options. So once that is done, we would need to add our agent. So we can use the manage agents binary. So manage agents. All right. So uh, at this point, we're actually ready to, to install the agents. However, before we do that, let us actually uh, install the web UI. All right. So uh, what we'll need to do now is because we installed Apache, we're going to say uh, systemctl enable uh, Apache 2. Uh, we are then going to start the service, so start it. And then we need to utilize the Apache enable mod command to enable the rewrite uh, module. So sudo, or in this case, a2en mod. Uh, so Apache 2 enable mod uh, rewrite, because this is important. And then we can follow the command here. So system CTL restart Apache 2. Okay, once that is done, uh, we can actually install the web UI now. So what I'm going to do now is uh, we are going to navigate into the temp directory. And I'm just going to clone the repository there. So uh, let's see. There we are. There's the web UI. And we have, of course, the latest release. Uh, but I think we can just clone the repository and utilize the setup command. So I'll just say clone. And in this case, we can just say, uh, you know, git clone clone that in there. Uh, once that is done, we can then move it. So move uh, OSSEC uh, web user interface to var www HTML. Uh, and of course, if we head over into var www HTML, we want to get rid of the index.html file there. And we're just going to use the default OSSEC directory. So we'll navigate into that directory. We now need to uh, run the setup script so chmod plus x setup.sh and we can just say setup there we are uh, once that is done um, uh, once we execute that we'll need to specify an admin uh, or a username and a password so i'm just going to hit enter here username is going to be admin and i'll just specify my password uh, there we are let me type that in correctly there we go. And it's going to tell you enter your web server username on Ubuntu. It's going to be www.data. That's the service account used to manage Apache. There we are. That is done. So we now want to, uh, you know, change the ownership of this directory to the user www.data. So uh, www.data for the user and for the group. And we can then say var www.html and OSSEC WUI or web user interface. Hit enter, uh, chmod, and let's provide it with the appropriate permission. So 755 var www.html uh, and OSSEC WUI. We're then going to restart 
Apache, so uh, system CTL restart Apache 2. Uh, so that uh, restarts without any issues. And we can now take a look at our local host because I've installed it on, uh, on this Ubuntu uh, IP here or on this Ubuntu server. So if I navigate to my web server and click on OSSEC WUI, and you can see we are already getting uh, you know, the latest log. So uh, this is a very simple web user interface whereby you'll be provided with the latest events. And in this case, we're already getting the actual local, uh, we're getting the local logs here. So these, uh, these are logs pertinent to, 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 this is the auth log, for example, here and uh, you know a couple of other ones so this is uh, when it says black box this is the name the host name of this ubuntu system um, so just keep that in mind so the available agents are only the os uh, sex server which uh, again makes sense uh, you can also search um, you know for specific alerts based on your own requirements and also you know specify real-time monitoring you can also perform integrity checking and if you click on stats, uh, you can actually get the stats for, uh, you know, a specific duration and you can click on about to learn more there. Um, so what Wazoo was doing, it was essentially taking all of the functionality of OSSEC and, you know, uh, having that integrated into a better looking user interface. Now, one thing that I wanted to highlight here is if I go back into var OSSEC, uh, let me explain, uh, you know, what is stored within this directory. So within this directory, you're going to have active response. So if we take a look at active uh, response here, uh, this will contain the binaries uh, responsible uh, or used, uh, you know, for active response. So for example, you have the firewall D drop script, the firewall drop script, etc. Uh, so those are found within there. You're then going to have the, uh, you know, the binaries directory where you have all the OSSEC binaries. Uh, we then have the logs directory, which is very important. So this contains your active responses uh, logs. So uh, cat active responses, nothing there. For alerts, you can see we have the alerts log and that will display the latest alerts. So because we started uh, OSSEC, it's running in the background, right? So uh, keep that in mind. Um, if we take a look at the actual directory here, so 2022, March, and, uh, you know, we can cat out the contents of this particular log file there. So that just contains it based on date. Um, so ideally with a tool like, uh, like Splunk, uh, you know, you could essentially forward these logs into Splunk and make sense of them. Um, and then of course you have your archives firewall and then your OSSEC uh, log. You then have your rules and uh, OSSEC comes with a predefined set of rules in XML format. So uh, a good example of this is, for example, if we take a look at some of the Microsoft auth rules here, so I can say cat ms uh, auth rules.xml, you can see that these are the rules here. And, uh, you know, these are just uh, going to tell you, uh, you know, when, you know, they're, they're, they're just uh, there to tell you uh, whenever something, uh, you know, suspicious is done. So, for example, you can see we have a Windows logon success, uh, you know, et cetera, et cetera. You get the idea. And all of these rules are enabled unless they are actually commented out. In this case, most of them are actually enabled. So that's where you can find everything. Now, in this case, what we want to do here is we want to get the uh, the actual OSSEC agent installed on the Windows system so that we can monitor it and you know monitor what's going on on that system. So uh, to do this, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, head over into the browser and if we click on download OSSEC, we want to click on uh, Windows and we can download the agent for Windows here. So I'll click on that there. And in this case, it tells us that that's not found on the server. So let's uh, let's check the root of this Windows directory here and let's see which one we can download. So we have uh, all of them from 2017. Can we download the latest one here? Yes, we can. So I'm now going to transfer this onto the Windows system. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm just going to open up a new tab, navigate into my downloads directory. Uh, so CD downloads, and I am going to set up a simple web server here. Uh, so I'll just call it, we'll use the Python module HTTP.server so I can download it onto the Windows system. Um, let's see, does that, uh, looks like there's an issue there. Can we use the Python 2 module? Do we have Python 2 installed? So Python M simple 
HTTP server. Uh, it doesn't look like that is working. Uh, for some reason, HTTP.server didn't work. Um, so can I say Python 3? We say Python 3, nothing uh, called. So we can just call this HTTP.server. And it tells us that that address, yeah, that's already being used by the uh, OS uh, user, uh, web user interface. So I'll just say port 8080. So I'm just hosting the contents of my downloads directory and then I'll switch over to the Windows VM now and I'll navigate to the IP address of this system here. So I have config, uh, it's 192.168.2.179. Okay, so let me just switch over to the Windows system. All right, so I'm back on the Windows system and I'll just navigate to the address there. So 192.168.2.179. And uh, we want to access our port 8080, so 8080. And we can download the OSEC uh, Windows agent. So I'll click on that there, save, and I'll save it on my desktop, save, close, and we can run the setup. So I'll close all the tabs there. There's the agent setup. And I'm just going to go through the installation process. So we want to make sure that everything is enabled. So en enable the integrity uh, checking, option and uh, scan and monitor IIS logs and then of course we'll hit next install and that'll just take a couple of seconds once that is installed we don't want to run uh, the OSEC uh, agent manager because we want to run it as admin the first time so I'll open up my start menu run as admin and we now need to specify similar to what we did with Wazoo the uh, OSX server IP and then the authentication key. So we know the server IP is 192.168.2.179. We still need the authentication key. So let me show you how to add the agent to the OSX uh, server using the, uh, using the actual uh, manage agent uh, binary. So let me switch back over to the Ubuntu system. All right, so I'm back on the Ubuntu system. I'm just going to close this tab here. And uh, there we are. So we want to click, uh, we want to execute the manage agents binary. So I'll, uh, I'll execute that. And as you can see, this allows you to add agents. So I'm going to say A to add an agent. What's the name for the agent? We'll just call it Windows 7. The IP address, uh, let me just verify that. That is 192.168.2.35. So that's the IP address of the Windows 7 system. Uh, what's the ID for the new agent? We can just say 001. Do we want to add it? Yes, we do. We then need to get the uh, the actual key. So we can use the E option to extract the key for that particular agent. So 001. And we now need to copy this over to the Windows 7 system and paste it within the server auth key uh, dialog box. So I'll copy this and let me switch over uh, you know, to the Windows system. All right, so I'm back on the Windows system and I just need to paste that in here. So uh, let me just uh, make sure that I can, uh, let me make sure I can actually copy. Uh, so let me enable my clipboard there and uh, I'm just going to copy the key again and I've pasted it within that box there. So you can now click on save, as you can see, adding key for the following agent and we're going to hit OK. And we then click on manage and start OS sec. So agent started. Once that is done, you can view the logs and the config. So we can view the logs here. And, uh, you know, because we already went through a very similar process with uh, Wazoo, which is, is essentially built on, uh, which is built on top of OSSEC, uh, that means we can also view the configuration here. And this is the standard OSSEC configuration that we had. Um, so you can see that um, this is commented there. We can see that we can customize, uh, you know, what is logged here. And uh, you can go ahead and, uh, you know, customize what you want added there. So there's the server IP address configured correctly. Active response, we can hit uh, disabled to no, for example. So I can say no. And, uh, you know, we can customize everything else. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to hit file save. And we can then click on restart. There we are. Save. And we can then click on the status. So it is running. All right. So I'm going to switch over. Uh, to my Ubuntu system because this is done on the Windows side. All right, so I'm just going to exit from the agent manager. And as it says, we are going to need to restart OSSEC. So in order to do that, I'm going to say OSSEC control. So 
I'm going to execute that binary control and I'm going to say restart. There we are. So that's going to restart everything. And uh, we can then check the actual status here. So uh, let's just make sure that everything is running on the server side. Indeed it is. If we go back to our browser and we take a look at the web interface here, I'm just going to refresh that. And uh, let's see whether that agent is going to be added because it should be running now. Um, I'm just going to make sure if we take a look at uh, agent control, uh, you can see that uh, we can list the available active agents. So I'm going to say LC. And in this case, it looks like it's added. So that is active, although that's not been highlighted here. There we are. It's actually been added now. All right. So we can see we have the Windows 7 agent added there. You can click on it to get more information regarding the system. So the IP address, the last keep alive uh, date and time, the operating system it's running and the version of the agent. And you can see it's highlighted here as an event that, uh, you know, this uh, this new agent is connected. So uh, now that we've set up our host intrusion detection system, which is OSSEC, uh, and we've installed the agent on, our, on the system we would like to monitor. By the way, you can also do that uh, for a Linux system. You can install the agent on a Linux system. Uh, but in this case, what we can do now is try and simulate a few events that, uh, you know, are going to be malicious in nature. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to fire up my Kali Linux system. And, uh, you know, actually, before we do that, uh, we can try and run a couple of commands. But uh, again, it, I think it would be better if we, uh, if we utilized the actual Kali Linux system to launch some attacks against that particular Windows system. So... Let me just fire up that VM. All right, so I'm back on the Kali Linux VM and we can perform a few attacks on the Windows system. So again, we'll just uh, try and gain access using the eternal blue exploit. So I'll say use uh, module zero and uh, we are going to set the target IP to the Windows IP address. So 192.168.2.35 and we can hit exploit. And we're going to perform, uh, we're going to be performing some uh, techniques that adversaries utilize. And let's see whether, uh, you know, OSSEC is able to identify uh, this malicious activity. So uh, there we are. We should get a um, interpreter session as administrator. So we can say sysinfo and get use ID. There we go. Entity authority system. And uh, what we can do is we can put this in the background and we can search for RDP and the platform uh, windows. And let's look for the actual um, type that in correctly. So there we are. We can enable RDP on the system. And, uh, you know, that is something that should be brought up. So I'll say use paste that in there. So this is a post exploitation module. So I'll say set session to one. Uh, we want to enable it. Do we want to forward it? No, the port to be configured is 3389 and uh, we can hit run. All right, so that's going to enable RDP for us. And if we run the search for, for modules again, uh, let's see if we can find the actual uh, check RDP module, which I believe exists. Uh, that enables it. Uh, we are looking for the... Uh, check RDP module here, which is an auxiliary module, I believe, or a post exploitation module. Uh, so there we are, that is there that enables it, which uh, again, in this case, uh, you know, is perfectly fine. So we list out sessions there. So sessions one. And, uh, you know, we can also emulate a bit of, uh, you know, some additional adversary uh, activity here. So I'll create a new uh, shell session here and I'll say net user and we'll just call we'll create a new user called hacked and I'll say add and that user has been added so now that we've simulated some activity let's switch back over into uh, the actual uh, Ubuntu VM and let's take a look at the web user interface and we'll see if uh, we're able to uh, you know identify any alerts based on the activity that we've just emulated or simulated furthermore I'll also be showing you where these logs can be found. All right, so I'm back on the Ubuntu VM and I'm currently on the OSSEC web user interface. 
and as you can see these are the latest events i'm just going to refresh this and uh, you know we can also limit this to uh you know we can actually limit this to a particular system so if i click on stats here or actually if we click on windows that that's actually for integrity checking but if we go into search and we click on real-time monitoring and uh, minimum level we can set that to seven categories I'll leave that as is. We are primarily looking for the Windows event log. So Windows, there we are, log format. And, uh, you know, we can essentially just click on search. And in this case, we can specify a start duration. So of course, we'll need to change the date there. So uh, I'll just uh, click on that there. And uh, we want to navigate all the way to the bottom here. Uh, so I'm just going to switch the date there to the current date. So um, let's see if I can actually change that there. There we go. And we are currently in 2022. So we can set 2023 there. And uh, we can then just hit search, right? So we can utilize this based on our own parameters. So you can search for activity based on your own parameters. So in this case, this is only going to display uh, you know, Windows logs, uh, you know, with a minimum level of seven, we can also reduce this to maybe six and it's search. And you can see we have pretty much identified that activity. And, uh, you know, we can also bring this down maybe to five. And hopefully that will give us a uh, more accurate idea of uh, what was done. So we can see uh, that uh, in this case, there was, uh, there are, uh, you know, quite a few events here. So uh, the first one tells us that the domain users group changed and uh, this is uh, you know on the windows 7 system so we can see that we get the content there so it tells us uh, security auditing no user a member was added to the to a security enabled global group and i'm guessing this is the eternal blue uh, this is the actual eternal blue exploit here when we ran it and then a user account was enabled and created that was also identified so if we take a look at the content here, let's see if we can identify the usernames uh, that we specified. Uh, there we are. So the SAM account name is hacked. We didn't specify a password, but it's good to see that that activity was also logged. And uh, you can see that that user account enabled or created. And I believe that's still for the um, user hacked. There we are. Uh, I also believe if we go back into main here, uh, we should be able to see that RDP was enabled. So there we are. We can see that uh, this has the uh, this has a level of three, which is a bit interesting. But uh, you can see that this tells us that uh, RDP was uh, enabled and the remote desktop service service was changed from demand start to auto start. So again, you can now start to, to actually tell how important this information is. And as I said, this user interface may be a bit ugly and a bit outdated, but it's still very functional. And as I said, you can always afford these logs into the actual, um, into a, a seam like Splunk or uh, even Wazoo, but Wazoo already has this. Uh, so uh, that is how to set up the OSSEC, uh, you know, HIDS, how to set up the OSSEC agent on a system you'd like to monitor, how to set up the OSSEC web UI, and of course, uh, you know, what we can do as a final uh, as a final step here is to take a look at the logs. So I'm going to head over into the logs here and if we take a look at the alerts. There we are. You can see we can cap the contents of alerts.log. And uh, there we are. So this is the latest uh, alert here, which tells us um, that is for black box, I believe. Uh, no, that is actually for the Windows system, but, uh, you know, we pretty much get the latest logs here. And, uh, of course, uh, based on our own configuration, we know that uh, alerts with a specific level are going to be logged. And, uh, you know, you can go ahead and take a look at the logs there. And if we take a look at uh, the, 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 the logs within the following directory, so under March and CAT OSSEC alerts there, you can see that it's pretty much the same. Um, if we take a look at, uh, let's see, let's go back into the logs here. And if we take a look at firewall, we can see that we have the firewall log here. Nothing is logged within that. That makes sense. If we cap the contents of osec.log, 
you can see this is the OSSEC log, which tells you, you know, what what's happening with regards to the uh, with regards to OSSEC. And uh, we then have uh, the active responses log here. So, you know, we can actually cap the contents of that file. So no active responses there. Um, OK, so uh, that, as I said, is how to set up the OSSEC HIDS. And uh, that is going to conclude the practical demonstration side of this video. So thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any questions or suggestions, you can reach out to me uh, via my Twitter handle, which is Hackersploit, or you can reach out to me uh, via the Hackersploit Discord server. And the links to that will be added as a resource uh, for this particular video. So thank you very much for watching. In the next video, we're going to be taking a look at how to perform uh, memory analysis with Lime. More specifically, we'll be taking a look at how we can use Lime uh, to dump memory on a Linux system. And, uh, you know, in the next video after that, we'll be taking a look at how to analyze the dumped memory and, uh, you know, how to identify intrusions or uh, exploits and any malicious activity by, uh, of course, taking a look at the uh, at the memory uh, that was uh, actually, you know, running at the time uh, on that system or, you know, running during the attack. So I'll be seeing you in the next video.